Hello, lovely people. <clears throat> it's Catherine Massell, Ascending Earth Creatrix, Spiritual Growth Catalyst, Intuitive Energy Healer. Hi, and happy Saturday afternoon. Happy Soul Session Saturday. I'm going to share this to my group. And then I'm going to get in to this exciting topic. Um, I'm also going to share the link for healing, uh, excuse me, Heal, Awake, and Align Bootcamp because, hi Allison, the last day to sign up with the early bird price is today. So if you pay in full, it's $5.97. If uh, you want to pay with a payment plan, um, it is three forty nine. Two payments, two monthly payments of three forty nine. So I am going to put that in there, so you can see it. I'm going to see if a few people will jump on. Um, there will still be a payment plan available. Obviously, it'll be more than it is today, um, but it'll still be two monthly payments. And the price goes up, if you want to pay in full, it's $7.97, which is going to be, oh, thanks, Allison, which is going to be still a bargain. And if you want to jump in on this, I can tell you right now that this will never be this low price again. It just won't. Um, the more I'm compiling and adding all the exercises, all of the um, mind empowerment exercises in here, all of the energy healing, the karmic healing, we're gonna do the healing of the soul contracts, um, the intuitive work I'm gonna do with you, it's a lot. And it is, at this price, a complete and total bargain. There's gonna be an incredible amount of content in here and it's content that you're going to go back to again and again because it's content that helps you master the art of the up level, which means that you are constantly upgrading, you're reaching new thresholds of abundance and prosperity in your life. But with that, there always comes new layers of resistance, stuff that we thought maybe we have even dealt with or peeled away. There's always a new layer of it to uncover. And it's part of the game of being here on this playing field in 3D experience. And if you understand how to play the game, life becomes a lot less chaotic. And it actually becomes fun to manifest and create new ways of beings. Being. <laughs> not, not new beings. New ways of being. So we'll see who else jumps on, but I'm going to get into the meat and potatoes of this because it's something I'm very, very excited about because I love talking about ascension. I love talking about multidimensional um, aspects of our consciousness and being plugged into many different levels at once. And one of the ways that we experience that and can have um, sort of a grasp of what I'm talking about here is understanding that relationship between your now moment and your future self. So I love the title of this, your present and future selves are partners in the same dance. Yes. And your past is too, but that can be less empowering for people to hear that than to think of the present and future selves being partners in the same dance, yes, because we assign our past with oftentimes mistakes, uh, marks of our failures, uh, marks of where we should have succeeded, could have succeeded, would have succeeded, and we did not, right? So think about it this way. We think about that statement, your present and future selves are partners in the same dance. Think about it in this sense. Every decision you make in the now moment is a partnering with your unique path into the future. Yes? Would you agree with that? So your present and future selves are partners in this same dance. We are inextricably intertwined. It is this divine dance with different access points of our being. The future is unwritten, but at the same time, it's accessible and it's just another aspect of our being. We have to understand as we are you know, furthering our path on, 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 on this trajectory of planetary ascension, we have multi-dimensional access points of being. Depending on where we are focusing our attention, we have access to the now point of consciousness at a future time. 
This is a really, really um, nebulous thing to try to talk about. It's more of an experiential kind of thing. And I'm going to talk about that in a minute because there's ways to experience that, which I'm going to share with you. Um, you have the ability to keep choosing. So remember what I said, every decision you make in the now moment is a partnering with your own unique path into the future. Okay. You have the ability then to keep choosing based on how you perceive your now. Okay. And largely your now is an acquired perception based on a lifetime of prior experience of where you have been what you have felt, what experiences you have um, undergone, right? What situations you have had in your life come and go. So you limit yourself in this way. And I'm going to say this again, because I really want you to grasp this stuff if you can. You have the ability then to keep choosing based on how you perceive your now. And how you perceive your now is largely an acquired perception based on where you have been, a lifetime of prior experience. If you're here, let me know you're here, say hello. So you limit yourself in this way, okay? If you understand that this is happening, and again, it's not there for you to judge it or even place value on it for now, just ex accept it as, okay, I can get with this. I can, I can get where you're at with this. You limit yourself in this way by only looking at then what is what is and what was. So if you're following, hi Cheryl, if you're following my line of reasoning here, every decision you make in the now moment is a partnering with your unique path into the future, your unique path into the future. And you have the ability to keep choosing based on how you perceive your now, which is largely, your now is largely an acquired perception based on a lifetime of where you have been or what was prior experience and that you limit yourself in this way by only looking at what is now and what was. Not that you want to anchor so much into the future that you're not living in the now, but we need to make that leap past what is. Because unless you're living a completely fulfilled life, doing exactly what you want to be doing, having the exact people you want yourself surrounded by, engaged in daily life, doing everything you want to do and nothing but, unless you're that person, your attachment to what is, is keeping you limited to what can be. It's tethering your imagination and it's giving you the, a really myopic view of what can be if you're simply not able to look past what is. Okay, you guys following me so far? <laughs> so, um, I wrote a post today about your divine inheritance and that is your divine inheritance. Your soul's blueprint here on earth at this time is that of wealth and abundance and prosperity, okay? But you still have to focus on tearing down the barriers that keep you from feeling that this is your reality. Okay, so if you, unless you are one of those people that I mentioned before where everything in your life is totally peachy, totally hunky-dory, and I salute you and I congratulate you for that, and that's wonderful, and you should be teaching classes then. But unless you are that person, there's a really, really, really good chance that you are completely focused on what is, and your subconscious programming of everything that you are acting on then is based on what is not what can be. So you're limiting your imagination. So in order to, you know, tear down these barriers to keep you from feeling that this is your reality, you have to embody the intention consistently of creating new ways of being that are aligned with wealth and abundance. You have to make this part of the daily alignment you put yourself into. You have to embody the intention of consistently creating new ways of being based on what you want. And I'm gonna talk about that too. Cheryl says we need to accept what is. We do need to accept what is, but accepting it, and as I mentioned before, having this compassion for where you are, this forgiveness for where you are, because oftentimes we're not, we're looking at what is, and we're kicking ourselves in the butt for it. I'm here because all these horrible things happened to me in my life, not for me, happened to me in this life, or, um, 
I am not willing to see past what is, is what I'm really getting at. What I'm really trying to um, get you to, to bite off and chew on here is that, yes, we must accept where we are, but we accept it with compassion and with love, and we accept that we also have the ability to change it based on our desires and the quality of experience we wish to attract in our lives. Acceptance is an awareness. That's all tied up in the same ball of wax, yes? But understand this, and this is where we get hung up. We think that something, some nebulous force in the universe is constantly keeping our abundance from us. It's constantly like saying, here you go, like dangling it like a carrot in front of us and saying, don't you want this? Don't you want this? Don't you want this? And that the universe is inherently cruel and that it keeps just taking it away from us. Not the case. All that you need is provided for you here. If you are suffering in the illusion of lack consciousness, of poverty consciousness, you are not looking past what is. So accepting where you are is one thing, if you're doing it with love and compassion, which is how I fully um, encourage you to look at what is, okay? And then place a value on, am I happy with this? Is this working for me? Is this keeping in a, in a pattern of limitation or lack consciousness? If yes, you can still accept where you are and accept that change is possible, there is potential for it, that you crave it, and it is possible for you. Because sometimes we think change is possible, but we don't think it's possible for us. And I did a live about that about a month ago. Um, so if you want me to tag you in that, I will. So if you are suffering in the illusion of lack consciousness, you are not looking past what is. And the thing is, we need to look past what is, because we have to understand that we are gifted with this incredible thing in this lifetime, and it's called our imagination. Your imagination is then fully tethered, if you're not willing to look past what is, your imagination, which is this incredible tool for your creation process, by the way, the most incredible tool for your creation process, your imagination is then fully tethered to only that which you can see. So think about that. If you're accepting what is and you're not looking past what is, you're not willing to even look past what is, you are taking this incredible tool of your imagination, which is the most expansive thing. Imagination is greater than knowledge. Imagination is greater than wisdom even. I will venture to say that. Imagination is limitless. And it, what, it is what anchors you into your limitless potential as a human being in this lifetime. It is how you take that divine essence of who you are and link it and connect it, intertwine it with your human beingness. So in other words, okay, I'm gonna say this again, your imagination then, if you're not willing to look past what is, if you're not willing to accept that there is anything past what is, then your imagination is then fully tethered to only that which you can see, feel, touch, taste, okay? So when you are in that space, you will only look for further evidence to corroborate that, to validate your experience even further because the subconscious wants that, okay? In other words, you would allow the singular aspect of your perception to dictate your reality now and going forward in time. Some imagination can also be limited by the ego. Then it's not truly imagination. That's not truly imagination. And I'm gonna get into why that is in a second. Because if you are truly tapped into your limitless potential through your imagination, your imagination is not part of ego. Your imagination is part of the divine. It, it exists beyond, your imagination exists beyond the intellect. The ego is more tied to the intellect. And so your imagination is truly that divine, limitless potential of who you are. And if you are tapped into the divine, if you're tapped into your higher self, if you are tapped into your truth, if you are tapped into that place within you that knows your divine cosmic essence and acts on the beliefs of that part of you rather than beliefs of the ego part of you, that's imagination. That's my, I, I'm, not, I'm not going to, you know, argue about that. <laughs> that happens to be my feelings on it. You may have an entirely different feeling about that, and I honor that. But I, I truly believe, 
and I've seen enough evidence in working with clients and with my own experience that imagination is beyond the intellect, it's beyond ego. It is that gift of divine source working through you to create limitless, limitless potential here in this lifetime. It is that portal of energy that opens up any way of being that you desire that is aligned with the heart. So when this happens, okay, if, in other words, if you would allow the singular aspect of your perception about what is to dictate your reality now and going forward in time, if you're not willing to look past what is, when this happens, you disengage from where you are or from who you are as the master builder of your experience. You disinherit your divinity and your soul's blueprint of prosperity. You stop really that divine dance between your present self and your future self because, it's, it's because it is truly this divine, beautiful choreography between you and the divine. If you wanna read more about that, I have a post called Dancing with the Divine. It talks about um, really the dance of manifestation that we engage in with the divine, with the co-creator, source as co-creator. So you stop then living in the feeling of being who you desire to be. So if you wanna read this, I wrote it down today in the post that I shared in the group. So if you are allowing your present and your past to fully inform your perception of what can be, you are living your daily life at a mere fraction of your divine potential. You are a limitless creator. You are a goddess in a body. You are God in a body. Begin practicing you can start this right now. Begin practicing the intention to expect more of what it is that you want. Understand that you can go into that place of expectation. Not only creating the intention of having more of what you want, of more of what you desire, but then the expectation is how we take it a little step further. Have the expectation that more of what you want will show up. And how do you do that? How do you embody that? Give yourself permission, first of all, because this is something I talked about yesterday in the live that I did yesterday. I talked about how we don't often give ourselves permission to feel into what we truly want, what we really want, what we really desire. So give yourself permission to feel your desire in your body, mind, and soul as if it's already here, as, it's, as if it's just a foregone conclusion. It's a done deal. And then you're, you're ensuring the inevitable physical form of your desire showing up here on the 3D plane. So when we think about this limitation or this lack of consciousness, we, we have to understand fully, because I talked about choice in the beginning here, that the limitation that you're experiencing is a conscious choice. It is a conscious choice. Aligning with any other belief diminishes your power as a sovereign creator. It, it, allows you again to disinherit from that sense of, I am the master builder of my experience. I am the creator of my experience. You are here to walk a divine path because you are, you are a spiritual being having a spiritual experience in a human body. You are God in a body. You are goddess in a body. You're here to walk a divine path. You're here to live the life you want to live. And this is where I wanna get into the next topic. Not someone else's modeling of a life that you can copy or emulate. You are here for your soul's evolution. So when you're trying to copy someone else's life, first of all, it's lazy, <laughs> sorry. It is, it's lazy because it's again, you limiting your imagination. It's you stepping out of that realm of infinite creation and limitless creation by dishonoring your own imagination. When we try to emulate or copy someone else's life, we're looking for sort of some sort of patterning or modeling of behavior of like, that, that could work for me. I could like that. I could, I could do that. That is only, again, a fraction of what you can be. And you're also taking on the modeling of someone else's life for your soul's transformation and, and evolution. That doesn't work. That never works. That's always going to be inauthentic, and it's always going to feel off. Okay? You are here for your soul's evolution and inner transformation, for true and lasting transformation. You embody heaven on earth by being a divine soul, having your divine desires. You are having a spiritual experience in human form every single day, okay? 
it's time to really fully connect with this. So, so what about your incredible imagination, your creativity, and your divine inspiration that comes from you being an aspect of pure source energy? What about that? What about that? What about your imagination? Do you stop and think about your imagination? It's interesting because you're trying to think about your imagination with an aspect of the intellect that really doesn't understand the scope and the limitless potential of imagination. But that doesn't mean we shouldn't think about it. It doesn't mean we shouldn't spend some time considering it, going into that space where perhaps as the beings that we are becoming, that we are having this heart-mind unification. I did a live on that too, where we can bridge that, that subtle realm of the heart of imagination with the intellect and how we create reality in the physical realm. Can you understand the possibilities of limitless potential when you have those things unified in a very balanced way? to create more harmony in your life so it doesn't feel like these parts of you, your imagination, your intellect are constantly fighting it out, duking it out? Can you grasp the potential of what your life could look like if you anchored more into your imagination, anchored more into your creativity, anchored more into the inspiration that you feel when you're tapped into that divine aspect of who you are, your soul? When your aspect of your soul is in the driver's seat instead of the ego, instead of the intellect. And I'm not saying those things shouldn't be in balance because the more we want to fight the ego, the more it's just going to crop up like a, like a, like that um, game whack-a-mole. <laughs> you know that game whack-a-mole they have at the carnival? The more we try to like press the ego down and suppress it, the more it will just pop up and rear its ugly head in a lot of different places. So we, instead we want to have this kind of dance. We want to have this kind of balance. We want to get the ego on board with what we're doing. We want to get the ego on board with the imagination. Okay. What about your incredible imagination, your creativity, your divine inspiration that comes from you being an aspect of pure source energy? This is where you untether yourself from what is and has been and where largely that's informing what can be, informing you what can be or what's possible for you. And you start begin if you are really anchoring into that imagination then and saying, I, I, do no, I no longer want to have what has been completely inform my perspective what what can be. This has to be part of your intention. That's how you start leaning into the imagination. And when you start doing that, you begin imprinting your masterpiece of creation onto the 3D playing field. Yesterday I talked about how, as women, I did a live here in the group, and you can go and search for that. Um, I did it here, and I also did it on my business page. Talked about how we, as women, don't even give ourselves permission sometimes to imagine our purest potential. We won't even allow ourselves to go there. It's too big, right? It feels too expansive. We don't feel like we're allowed to ask for that. So then we don't even allow ourselves to go into the feeling space of what it would feel like to create it and have it. We just, we just block that. We block it. It's not, it's not for me. Maybe for everyone else, but not for me. Um, I, didn't, my, I didn't grow up with this idea that I could have this much more. I didn't grow up with this idea that my imagination was unlimited. I didn't grow up with this idea that... Um, I could keep creating new ways of being that were beyond anything I've ever known or had anyone exemplify for me in this life. It's almost like you need to go back to childhood. Kids are very imaginative, right? Because they've never been, I mean, they don't have all the filters that we have as adults where we're told like, don't daydream. Well, I was told that a lot at school, but I still daydream all the time. Um, but they don't grow up with all the filters that we have as adults. How many times have we been told no on our journey into adulthood and beyond that it has really squashed our imagination? You can't do that. You can't have that. You can't have, you can't be that. No one else is doing it. Why should you be able to do it? Right? I mean, the, the messages have been filtered into our awareness in a million different ways in really a lot of disempowering ways growing up. And so kids, you're right. You're right, Cheryl. They don't have that. They, they think it's all possible. 
I mean, I can't tell you how many times I jumped off the second floor of my uh, parents' house because I thought I could fly when I was a kid. I'm lucky I didn't break anything. Sometimes I even put, like, I had a... <laughs> I shared my room <laughs> with my sister. She was eight years younger than me, and so I would take the mattress from her crib and throw it out the window and then jump out the window and I would put on a makeshift cape, makeshift cape and jump onto her baby mattress. I'm amazed I didn't break anything. But I believed that I could fly. <laughs> um, and I'm not advising that. Please, please, disclaimer, disclaimer alert. I'm not advising that anyone do that. But yesterday I talked about how we as women, we don't even give ourselves permission to go there, to be imaginative, to go into that place of our pure potential and, and feel into the essence of that. So what do we do instead? And this piggybacks on what I was saying just a little bit earlier. We tend to imprint someone else's idea then of a divine life onto ours, which is ludicrous, number one, because we are here for our soul's journey and transformation and inner transformation, which is what I mentioned, right? We're here for our own soul's evolution. So how can we imprint someone else's idea of a divine life onto ours? It's, it's just not going to work. It's always going to be inauthentic. It's always going to feel like there's something missing. It's always going to feel like there's a puzzle piece missing, right? So we have to go into that place where we imagine what it feels like to have the divine life we desire. We have to find a way to kind of, even if we just kind of wiggle in through a little crack in our awareness to find that place where we can embody that essence, even if we allow ourselves just a teeny tiny glimpse of it, we're going to where we need to be in order to truly be the divine creators of our experience. So imprinting someone else's idea of a divine life onto ours when we look at, let's just say, and it's not wrong to look at people in our life who inspire us and make us want to be greater versions of ourselves. Yes, there's nothing wrong with that. But it's when we start trying to be that person and take that person's imprint and put it onto ours, hoping that it'll stick, it never will. It never, 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 never will. You have to go into this place inside, deep within you. You have to tap into your soul and find out what makes you happy, what makes you feel free, what makes you feel this lightness of being, what makes you feel a divine connection to, to the source aspect, that pure potential of who you are, what makes you feel enlivened, what makes you feel passionate, full of fire, full of inspiration, creativity. This will be unique for you based on your soul's journey of evolution and your process of transformation here in this lifetime. Your path of, into your future is unique to you and only to you. So it is folly to try to imprint someone else's idea of a divine life onto yours. It's one thing to take bits and pieces and say, okay, well, how will this fit into my life? How will I translate this into my experience? But when we try to um, take the whole parcel of someone else's life and try to imprint it on, onto ours. It will never, ever work. And why am I talking about this over and over and over again? Because I am passionate about being able to give you tools that help you move into this place of, I can see and feel and know what my alternate self is, as if it's happening right now, as if I have already acquired this way of being that I desire, and it is made manifest in this moment. I'm feeling it as if. I'm living as if. And so many of us do not know how to do this. <laughs> we get really lost in this. And <clears throat> we get stuck in feeling so attached then, even if we, we do our, allow ourselves to go there, we get so attached to the outcome of it sometimes that we lose that place of surrender. And that is an incredibly important part of co-creating with source is that we understand that source energy is our partner in the whole manifestation and creation process. And if we are not surrendering part of our attachment, to, well, all of the attachment to the outcome, to the universe and, and surrendering the how to the universe, we're not really understanding this co-creative dance with our future self, with source energy 
and how we truly create the nature of creating. When we are able to get into that space of, let's just say, your alternate self, what you're really desiring right now is a promotion in your job. Or let's just say you've take, you're taking a new career path. Let's say that you have thought about it, you've got the training that you need, um, you have all the, the, um, the requirements to show up and do this job, you have um, the desire to do this job, and perform the daily tasks of this job that would fulfill the needs of it. Let's just say you have all this in place. On an intellectual level, you understand what it takes to, to do this job and to be in this job every day. You understand what it feels like to go through the motions, let's just say, the daily tasks of fulfilling the obligations of this job. But when you think into the, let's just say, the, the benefits of having this job and what it will bring you, let's just say it's more money. Let's say, since we're imagining here, significantly more money than you make right now. And that it will afford you things in life that you have not had available to you thus far. Much more travel. This job is also going to give you three weeks of vacation time a year that you can take at any time. And you're available, this, this is available to you right when you start working. You can start planning your vacation right when you start. There are jobs like this, by the way. My sister has one. <laughs> and let's just say that you will have a team of people working under you. This is not an experience you've had before either. But you know you can delegate, you know you have that ability to understand working with a team and you understand the dyna dynamics of that and where your zone of genius lies in leading that team and what you need to focus on and all the other tasks you need to delegate. So intellectually you understand all of this, you get it. But what is that going to feel like? What are the benefits that come from this new job, this new career? What is that going to feel like? Let's just say you've only been able to take one week of vacation a year for the last 20 years of your life. What is three weeks of vacation going to feel like? You don't know. You don't know because you haven't had it. What is making, let's just say, two and a half times the income that you've made for the last two years, two and a half times the income that you're going to be making in this new job, what does that feel like? And you'll say, Catherine, I don't know because I've never had that. And maybe, let's just say for the sake of argument, you don't have any family members who've ever had that either. So there's nobody to talk to <laughs> and find out what does that feel like? You have to go into this place within yourself. If you're truly trying to manifest this, okay, you have to go into this place within yourself. And you're, there is a part of you that knows this and can access this information, by the way. Every single one of us has this place where we can access this. Because again, we are divine, limitless beings and having a spiritual evolutionary process in a human body. So we all have this information within us. We have this wisdom. But where do you go to tap into that? How do you tap into it? How do you access that? How do you access the feeling so that you can embody it now as if it's happening? So that you ensure, as I mentioned before, the inevitability of that showing up on the physical plane, it's a foregone conclusion. It's done deal. It's going to happen. How do you do that? How do you access that? Well, remember how I always say, <laughs> I never just introduce these things to you that feel larger than life and then just leave you there and just say, oh, okay, we'll figure it out. Have fun with that. I will never do that to you. That's cruel. I always, I, I love problem solving. I love problem solving. I love it, love it, love it, love it, love it. If I wasn't doing this, I probably would have been a private detective. I like creating ways for us to anchor into the ways that we create. As manifestors, master builders of our experience, we have to know how to create. We have to know how to create. We have to be able to anchor into those ways of creating. And what I like to do is give you those ways. So next week, well actually, just, well as of tomorrow, tomorrow's Sunday, I keep thinking today is Sunday. Thir Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. I'm going to show up live here in Ascending Earth Creatrix and I'm going to be sharing three live energy healings and activations with you that are going to help you understand 
how you create what you want, how you move into that place of partnering with your future self and engage in that divine dance, how you take where you are right now in your present moment where you can move past what is, move past largely your perception that's been informed by what is and what was, and feel into the essence of what you want and embody that as if what you desire is already here right now. This is something that many, many, many of us struggle with and I wanna give you some help with that. So I want you to be bold in your imagination. I want you to understand the sacred gift that imagination is for you and how it helps you to create. It is your most incredible, powerful tool for creation, imagination above anything else because your imagination is that gift that comes to you from divine source and is a gift that comes without filters. It is a gift that comes to you without limits. It is a gift that comes to you to help you understand the realm of infinite potentiality and possibility. So what am I going to do for you? Um, I am going to do on Wednesday, I haven't decided on the third one yet, but Wednesday I'm going to do the expanding your vessel exercise because in order for you to truly understand the vastness, the void of infinite creation that imagination possesses, we need to expand our vessel. We need to expand past um, the physical body and bring all of the energy fields that are in and around the physical body and expand them out. Doing this helps us to anchor into more of our infinite potential. It, it um, strengthen, strengthens our creation with source, our cosmic being, and with the potentiality of our, of our limitless creation. So that's going to be on Wednesday, expanding your vessel. Thursday, we're going to do Journey to the Alternate Self. And this is a Theta Trance. You're welcome, Cheryl. I hope that you'll be able to join us. The second day, which will be on Thursday, and this is going to be at 10 a.m. live here. Um, I'm going to do it from my business page, and I'm going to share it here in the group because um, I want to make it very open. <laughs> um, Journey to the Alternate Self is something that I shared in my mastermind group, Heal, Awaken, Ascend. And it is a Theta Trance Meditation. It's a guided Theta Trance Meditation. So you go very deep into that place where you are guided into your alternate self. And when I say your alternate self, you can prepare yourself right now by thinking about, and with true clarity and discernment, and if you didn't watch the live I did yesterday, I talked about having clarity and discernment about what you really want, emphasis on really, go back and watch that video. Because when you are journeying to the alternate self, it really behooves you to get super, super crystal clear about what your alternate self looks like. And here's, here's the little key to this. Your alternate self is already you. We are multidimensional beings. We have many different points of access, as I mentioned at the beginning of this broadcast here. So understand that your alternate self already exists. Because we are living... In, in many different multidimensional points of access at once. We have parallel lifetimes, we have collapsing timelines, we can jump timelines, something I'm going to talk about in a second. So get very clear about what you want your alternate self to look like. And then day three, which will be Friday, I'm thinking about bringing in a whole new activation that I haven't shared with anyone at all. Can your alternate self be male? You want to think about creation here, Cheryl. You want to think about, I mean, if you want to, you do whatever you want in the alternate self, but I am um, curtailing, or not curtailing this, I am, um, what's the word I'm thinking of? Tailoring this to those of you who want to use this meditation to help create your new way of being as if it's happening right now, because it is. But it's going to help you kind of bridge that multidimensional point of access and helps you kind of partner with your future self so that it's their future self is now. So this is really a tool for manifesting. But you do with it whatever you want. If you're not trying to manifest anything right now and you just want to play, have at it. Because you can listen to this 
alternate self trance meditation again and use it any way you want. But it's really being tailored for manifesting what you desire to bring it in and accelerate the path of, of manifestation and get you into that feeling space of creating essence into form because that's how we create and manifest in 5D. Um, and also it helps you to move what's really it's designed for the journey to the alternate self medita meditation is to see what your lo life looks like as that version of you that already has what you want instead of like I mentioned taking that modeling or copying of someone else's behavior and trying to imprint it onto your own life this helps you to move out of the habit of doing that if you will and then the third um, guided meditation I'm going to do with you is undecided. I will decide on that later on what that's going to be. But these are all going to be designed to help you embody the essence of your divine life because this is how we create, this is how we manifest, this is how we create new ways of being by taking essence and bridging it into form. Okay. The time jump manifestation method is another way I help you do this. This is something that I share in um, the Sacred Feminine Manifestation Alignment. It's something that I share in the Ascended Feminine, which is an ongoing course that you can still, still sign up for because when we work with Hathor, we work with the Time Jump Manifestation Method because she helps us to access multi-dimensional points of zero point awareness. Um, wherever we happen to be, be or whatever playing field we're on. And this is a gift that came through working with the Hathors and that's working with Goddess Hathor and her Council Energetic, her initiates. So this is a gift that came through for me, the time jump manifestation method, and also something I'm sharing in Heal, Awake, and Align um, to help you understand that you can bridge that gap very quickly, very seamlessly between where you are now, if you're willing to look past what is, your present moment, and your future self. You can bridge these two, you can jump in between, because it's a timeline jump, you can do that. You have the ability to do that and you have the ability to create in any playing field that you wish, by the way. That's up to you. But what serves us here on the 3D plane and the support we need here, we usually end up manifesting on the 3D plane. That's fine, you can do that. But the time jump manifestation method is something that I'm sharing with you to help you embody how you create essence into form. And I have some other embodiment exercises that I'm sharing in Heal, Awaken, Align. It's gonna be a really, really, really powerful course. Um, today's the last day to sign up for this. So if you are, if you have not read the full description of Heal, Awaken, Align Bootcamp, the link is here in the comments. The last day to sign up for early bird price is today. It's $5.97. If you wanna do a payment plan, you can do two monthly payments of $3.49. The price goes up to $7.97 tomorrow, which is still a bargain. There will still be a payment plan, but it'll obviously be more than $3.49 a month. So I will be posting the event for Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday as soon as I come up with the third activation that I'm going to do for you guys. But these will be live uh, guided activations that I'm going to do for you guys here in the group. And it's going to be broadcast on my business page as well at 10 a.m. Pacific time, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. So what are the dates on that? Um, 23rd, 24th, and 25th. Yes. All right, ladies, thank you for joining me live. Those of you that did, those of you who are watching the replay, I want to wish you all so much love and light. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.